Scary Mysteries, Twisted News, American Pilots UFO Sighting in New Mexico, and I-5 Strangler Killed in Prison. Terrifying cases of true crimes and strange events. Every week, Twisted News dives into two mysterious and scary cases currently happening in our world. This week, we'll tackle the mysterious case of an American pilot's encounter with otherworldly aircrafts in New Mexico and the shocking news about the death of the I-5 Strangler. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted News. Number 1. American Pilots UFO Sighting in New Mexico On February 21st, 2021, American Airlines Flight 2292 was flying en route from Cincinnati over to Phoenix, Arizona. The plane at that time was approximately 37,000 feet over the New Mexico airspace when the bizarre incident occurred. What was described as a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile flew swiftly overhead the Airbus A320. As per protocol, the pilot radioed the Albuquerque Center to report his observation and it just so happened that radio interceptor Steve Douglas was on the same frequency enabling him to capture the transmission. The aviation blogger probably overheard something so creepy that he immediately went over to his blog called Deep Black Horizon to post the audio track along with the transcript of the message. Do you have any targets up here? The pilot can be heard saying on the audio recording. We just had something go right over the top of us. I hate to say this, but it looked like a long cylindrical object that almost looked like a cruise missile type of thing moving really fast right over the top of us. Douglas revealed that he did not actually mean to overhear the correspondence as he was only trying to pick another aircraft up with a radio scanner. He used two flight tracking websites, Flight Trader 24 and FlightAware, to triangulate the position of the plane which, as indicated in his report, was over the northeast corner of New Mexico, west of Clayton, New Mexico. Citing the data from the logs of the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, the blogger confirmed that there was no significant military aircraft present in the area at the time that this encounter happened. In a statement subsequently released by the White Sands Missile Range, which is a missile testing facility headquartered in southern New Mexico, there were no tests conducted on that day. Meanwhile, the FAA released their own statement regarding the controversial matter. They confirmed that indeed a pilot from American Airlines Airbus A320 reported seeing an object over New Mexico at around 1 in the afternoon on Sunday, February 21st, 2021. However, the agency itself could not corroborate the alleged sighting. The FAA said air traffic controllers did not see any object in the area on their radar scopes. The airspace authority went on to say that they had already forwarded a record of the incident to the FBI, so for now we'll have to wait to see what exactly it was, or more likely, Perhaps we'll never be told. Number 2. I-5 Strangler Killed in Prison California has been infamous for spawning some of the most notorious killers in the entire country. There's been the Zodiac Killer, the Evil Manson Family, the Co-Ed Killer, and the Golden State Killer. Also, if you were a girl living in the state, in the late 70s to the early 80s, your parents probably warned you about this other California murderer, the I-5 Strangler. The I-5, or Interstate 5, is a major north-to-south road that runs from San Diego to Blaine, Washington. The I-5 Strangler was known for preying on sex workers and women who encountered troubles along the road. He would offer his victims roadside assistance before kidnapping them. He would then proceed to violate them and strangle them to death. Records indicate that he raped and murdered at least seven women. After having his fill of violence, 
He would then leave the bodies of his victims thrown out like trash along the aforementioned highway, hence the nickname. It took years before the perpetrator was finally identified, arrested, and jailed. And just recently, an unexpected incident that could be called poetic justice occurred. But before we get into that, let's meet Roger Kibb. Born in 1949, Kibb endured a difficult childhood. At home, he was constantly beaten by his parents. Things were never better at school, as he was always bullied for his stutter. He had his first run-in with the law when he was a teenager. He was arrested for petty theft of women's bathing suits and stockings. He would also often be found tying himself up with women's underwear. As an adult, Kibb was an adrenaline junkie. If not selling furniture, he would often spend his free time skydiving. He eventually settled down in Northern California and got married to a woman who, much like his mother, was domineering. The Strangler drew his first blood in September of 1977. He lured a woman named Lou Burley into his van. He then drove the 21-year-old to a remote place where he assaulted and strangled her before disposing of her body in a nearby riverbed. A missing persons report was filed wherein he was briefly considered to be a suspect. However, no charges were formally brought against him. It then took more than three decades before Burleigh's remains were ever recovered. Ten years went by before Kibb claimed his next victim. On April 21, 1986, he picked up a sex worker named Laura Hedick. This 21-year-old disappeared and was eventually found in September of that year off Interstate 5, southeast of Sacramento. Investigators there found odd-sized shapes that had been cut out of the victim's tank top. The same piece of cloth was used to strangle the prostitute to death. On July 3rd of that same year, he abducted his third victim, 29-year-old Barbara Scott. Her violated body was found dumped along a stretch of road in Contra Costa County. Twelve days later, 19-year-old Stephanie Brown suffered the same bitter fate. Her car was discovered abandoned along I-5 while her body was recovered in a nearby drainage ditch. In August of that year, 26-year-old Charmaine Sabra was traveling with her mother when their car broke down. Acting like a good Samaritan, Kibb pulled over and offered to take Charmaine to a nearby car repair shop. The young woman got into the passenger's seat and was never seen again. Three months later, her remains were discovered by a hunter. At this point, authorities already suspected a serial killer could be prowling on I-5. A composite sketch was made describing the perpetrator as a middle-aged white man with a large nose. At the height of the investigation, Kibb was once stopped on a routine inspection. Officers remarked at his resemblance towards the sketch. He was questioned, but later on released with no charges being filed. Emboldened by his anonymity, the strangler claimed another hapless victim, 25-year-old Catherine Quinones, on November 5, 1986. But then finally, in September of 1987, when he attempted to kidnap a sex worker in downtown Sacramento, he was arrested and taken into custody. As police searched his vehicle, they found evidence linking him to the I-5 killings. He couldn't be locked up for good yet, but they opted to charge him with battery and solicitation while they worked on the theory that he was the I-5 strangler. He was then sentenced to eight months in jail And while there, prosecutors gathered more evidence to build up their case against him. He was first brought to trial for the murder of Darcy Frankenpole, a 17-year-old runaway. On May 12, 1991, the accused was found guilty of first-degree murder and was given 25 years to life in jail. In the succeeding decades, advanced DNA forensic technology brought forth more developments in his case. Eventually, Kibb was implicated in several other murders. 
Then on September 29, 2009, more than 30 years after he started his reign of terror on the I-5, he pleaded guilty to the rape and murders of Burley, Edick, Scott, Brown, Sabra, and Queenons. Taking the guilty plea bargain saved him from the death penalty, and he instead received six consecutive life terms. But then came the news on February 28, 2021. While incarcerated, the 81-year-old serial killer and rapist was found unresponsive on the floor of his prison cell. And in the very same way that he had killed many women before, he was found having been murdered by strangulation. So there were two of the most mysterious and shocking stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted News is sure to show you why. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys have made it this far in the video, then please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell because every week we have two new videos coming out for you guys to check out. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.